Welcome to this Liverpool Learning Partnership video session on maths anxiety. This session will give a brief overview on what maths anxiety is, who it affects, possible causes and ways we can combat maths anxiety in the classroom. There are links in the description box to signpost to further information and support. Maths anxiety is described by the Maths Anxiety Trust as a negative emotional reaction to maths that can lead to varying degrees of helplessness, panic and mental disorganisation that arises among some people when faced with a mathematical problem. Researchers from the University of Cambridge describe this negative emotional reaction as consisting of feelings of apprehension, tension or discomfort. Maths anxiety can manifest itself emotionally or through a person's behaviours. Emotional symptoms include helplessness, lack of confidence or a fear of getting things wrong. These can lead to physical symptoms such as heart racing, irregular breathing, shakiness, a hollow feeling in the stomach or nausea. Behavioural manifestations include avoiding lessons or maths tasks, misbehaviour and not pursuing a study of maths or careers linked to maths in some way. Maths anxiety begins to occur around the age of six and increases as children reach secondary school age. Feelings of maths anxiety often persist into adulthood. Research has found that maths anxiety is more prevalent in girls than it is in boys. People with low self-esteem, dyscalculia, or those who don't like maths are more likely to experience maths anxiety. It isn't always students with previous poor performance in maths that experience maths anxiety. A 2018 study showed that three quarters of people with, with maths anxiety actually achieve average or above average results in their maths assessments. Research has also shown that teachers themselves can experience maths anxiety. A study of two schools showed that 20% of teachers self-identified with descriptions of maths anxiety. So what could the causes of maths anxiety be? There are three main theories. Deficit theory suggests that when pupils perform poorly in maths, this increases their feelings of maths anxiety. Deleterious anxiety theory suggests the opposite and that it's pre-existing worry that has the impact on maths performance. Recent research from the University of Cambridge believes it's a mixture of a two and it's actually more of a vicious cycle. Reciprocal theory suggests that increased maths anxiety leads to a decrease in maths performance, which in turn increases maths anxiety. There are a range of different factors that could contribute to maths anxiety. These could be previous negative experience of maths in class and a fear of embarrassment in front of their peers. It could be a worry about not being able to complete the task within the allotted time. Research has shown that the views of parents and carers and their beliefs about maths and any stereotypes they might hold can have an impact. So for example, if the parent of a girl child believes that girls perform worse in maths than boys, that could have an impact on their child. Research has also shown that if teachers hold maths anxiety, this could inadvertently impact upon their pupils' anxiety in maths. So the question is, what can we do for those members of our school community who do experience maths anxiety? Well, rather than using phrases such as, I'm not a maths person, or he's got a maths brain, we should promote the fact that maths is a skill that we can all develop and all use. We should praise effort and strategies used in maths rather than saying to somebody, you're very clever at maths, which might lead another pupil in the classroom to think that that child has an innate ability in maths that I don't have. Create a classroom ethos where children feel comfortable to make mistakes. One way to do this is to use open-ended challenges in maths as a way for pupils to build resilience. Use real world context to show the applications of maths and demonstrate relevance to our everyday lives. Show that maths isn't simply an academic pursuit for the gifted, but it's useful for all of us and we can all do it. Build in thinking time for children to reduce worries about time pressure when asking general questions in maths. 
And yes, there will be times when children do need to complete timed activities. So ensure regular practice of basic skills to develop confidence, speed of recall and fluency in these basic facts. Outside of the maths lesson, teach general relaxation strategies such as breathing exercises, encourage pupils to use them in times of discomfort and anxiety. Allow opportunities for reflection on the pupils feelings about maths. Research has shown that pupils keeping maths anxiety diaries can actually really help them. It gives them opportunities to reflect on the emotional response they have to tasks. Talking about tasks with their peers or with their teachers can also help. Lugalia et al's growth zone model was developed as a response to maths anxiety. This model can be useful to share with pupils. Discuss how they feel when they're in each zone. It's also a useful tool to have next to you when you're planning. Think about how to ensure optimal growth. It's important to remember that adult members of the school community can also experience maths anxiety. This is upsetting for them in its own right, but this also can have an impact on the children around them. Support parents and carers with knowing about the maths curriculum. Offer training or support documents on methods that might be different to those they learned at school. If it's appropriate, signpost to courses or further support to help them develop their own math skills. Talk about maths anxiety with staff. Raise awareness of the impact it can have on them as well as on children. There is a really useful course available online from the University of Derby that we've linked to in the description box. Offer training in CPD for staff in maths and that will help build their own confidence in the subject. A great way to build a positive ethos around maths is to engage in local, national, international events, campaigns and programmes such as the Liverpool Maths Party, Liverpool Cant's Quality Mark, Maths Week England and Pi Day. We'd love to know how you encourage confidence, enjoyment and achievement in maths. How do you combat maths anxiety in your school? We'd love to know about local good practice and be able to share this with the other schools. Get in touch with us on social media or via email. For further resources and information about maths anxiety, please see the links in the description box.